Hey guys, it's Kira and welcome to another video. I hope that you are as excited about today's video as I am because as you might be able to tell from the empty bookshelves behind me, today we are going to be doing a bookshelf organisation video which I'm just literally buzzing with excitement about although I am kind of daunted. You might have seen one of my recent videos which was a bookshelf spring clean where essentially Jay and I together took every single book that we own off of our bookshelves, decided which ones to keep, which ones to get away. We ended up unhauling over a hundred books which is I think very impressive and then we packed all of our books into boxes which I'm just looking at on the floor in front of me and moved house. So since we moved house we decided to go for some brand new bookshelves. I decided to be a total booktube basic and go for the Ikea Billy bookshelves because why the hell not? And we now have four empty bookshelves ready to be filled with books which just brings me so much joy because if you watched that bookshelf spring clean slash unhaul video you'll know that all of our books including the 100 books that we unhauled were literally on one shelf so we were double even triple stacking books in some places and honestly there was just no room for organization of any kind I kind of gave up on trying to organize the books in any way because it was just totally pointless but now I have literally more space than I actually need so we have room to grow and I'm feeling very excited about the prospect of organizing bookshelves and of course I wanted to bring you guys along with me for the journey so without further ado obviously I have my cup of tea have my bookshelves and importantly I have a lot of books so let's get to organizing I honestly feel a little bit scared because I feel like Emperor Palpatine with unlimited power. I don't know what to do with my organisation, but I think the best place to start is literally just by going into a box and seeing what we've got in there. So, okay. Ah, I'm so nervous, I don't know what to do. Okay, I'm just gonna try and like gather books and see if I can come up with some kind of order. So, let's grab a few. Okay, so already I've got three completely different types of books. I have two books by C.J. Tudor, which are thrillers. I'm gonna put them there. I then have The Bear and the Nightingale, which is a fantasy, and then Girl Interrupted, which is a memoir. So, okay, moving on. What's next? Okay. Strange the Dreamer, I would probably classify it as fantasy. The storied life of AJ Fickery is contemporary. Call Me By Your Name is contemporary. The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, that is, I don't know what that is. I feel like that's historical fiction. And Clap When You Land is contemporary. Okay. The Night Circus definitely goes in fantasy. Then we have The Catcher in the Rye, which is a classic. House on the Strand by Daphne du Maurier. I think I'm going to have a du Maurier section, but I'll put that in classics for now. Winter Girls is contemporary. The Song of Achilles and Circe are both. Hmm, where would I put these? They're obviously retellings, but I don't think I have a massive amount of retellings, but equally I don't have a massive amount of fantasy, and I guess this falls into fantasy because it is Greek god-esque, so I'm going to go and pop that one in the fantasy section, at least for now. Okay, let's do this. The most fun we ever had is contemporary. Expectation is contemporary, and the name of the wind is fantasy. Submarine, that's contemporary. Mine by Emily Merrill, by this book, is also contemporary. And The Silence of the Girls, similarly to Circe and The Song of Achilles, I think I'm going to go and pop that one ahead in the fantasy section for now. Okay. Ooh, a nice little Pride and Prejudice, um, a Mansfield Park, a Persuasion, and I said Pride and Prejudice, what I meant was Jane Austen because there actually is not a copy of Pride and Prejudice, but for a moment, can we just appreciate these covers? They are so, so cute, definitely my favourite Austens, I have half of her books in this collection, but I absolutely want them all because I just think they're so pretty, and of course this is going to go over in my fantasy section, 
did I say fantasy? I meant classic, but what I'm thinking is that Jane Austen probably has enough to be her own section, but time will tell. Okay, shunky section. Right, we have Jodie Pico by, mm, I literally cannot talk today, My Sister's Keeper by Jodie Pico, that is a contemporary, Sky Painted Gold, that is, <sighs> this is another one, I'm like, I don't know where to place it because it is beautiful, so it definitely deserves attention, but it is a historical fiction set in the 1920s, and I don't have massive amounts of historical fiction, so I'm going to put that one with the Guernsey Literary and Particular Field Pie Society, and then see where they fit later on. We have another Daphne du Maurier, my cousin Rachel, and then some more classics, Hamid's Tale and Tess of the Durbervilles. Okay. Born to Run is a non-fiction, so that can go with Girl Interrupted in memoir. Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. I haven't read this one yet, but this is very similar in its internal and external cover design to the beautiful Jane Austen's, and there is a full Virginia Woolf collection that I would absolutely love to have on my shelves, but this is just the first one that I have purchased. That can go over there. We also have Shooting an Elephant by George Orwell, which is a classic. We have a few classics here, actually. Two Agatha Christie's, Murder on the Orient Express and Nemesis. And then we have Short Stories by Shirley Jackson and On the Road by Jack Kerouac. Boom. Okay, a few more contemporaries. Now the power actually is a dystopian. So, can you see the indecision in my eyes right now? Because honestly, where does this belong? Okay, this is going in my, I don't know where you go yet. Okay, About a Boy by Nick Hornby is a lovely contemporary, I love that book. And then Little Fires Everywhere. I've heard mixed things about what genre this belongs in, but I'm gonna pop it in the thrillery section. So, next up we have The Tattooist of Auschwitz, which is another historical fiction, but also it's not really fiction, it's based on a true story. So for now, I'm going to put this one in the memoir section. Though it's told by someone else, I feel like it has an air of realism about it because it is based on someone's true life story. So I think that fits with memoir. Okay. Next up, we have this irritatingly tiny copy of The Adventures of Tom Bombadil by Tolkien, which I'm just going to put to one side like some of the other books and decide what to do with that one later on. Hmm, The Beach by Alex Garland. Now I haven't read this one. I have, oh, okay, on the back it says Utopia. Now from the basis of the film version with Leonardo DiCaprio, I highly recommend watching if you haven't. I feel like this is a book that starts off just feeling like a contemporary like travel novel and very quickly descends into the sort of divide between dystopia and utopia and I guess maybe like a thrillery element so I think I'm going to put this one in the thriller section and I've also decided executively because I have the power the power here <laughs> I do make myself laugh I'm going to put the power in that section as well because this is going to kind of be like my darker reads section so that's that next up we have the beautiful the most beautiful copy of emma ever to exist by jane austen so i'm going to put this one with my other jane austen books to begin with however i also have a new bookshelf downstairs in the living room which I have a vision of being turned into my favourites bookshelf. So there's a chance that some of the books that I talk about today may end up being shifted around and moved and some of them may feature on my favourite shelf, but for now I'm just going to categorise and see where it takes us, you know, no pressure here. Okay, next up we have a few classicos. We have oh, beautiful 
Little Women and Heidi, the Puffin in Bloom editions. I mean, look at these covers. I feel like I need to display these more prominently because whilst their spines are really cute, the front covers are just exceptional. Let me see if I can find, I know that they have been, oh yeah, illustration by Anna Bond. Anna Bond is clearly very talented because I love these. So I'm gonna put these just here for now see where we take them. Okay, we have some battered editions of some classics. So we have a Pride and Prejudice, another Pride and Prejudice, and a Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. So they can go in the classics section. Next up we have the beginnings of what is going to be my Stephen King shelf. And I'm going to go ahead and dedicate this here shelf to the Stephen King collection because I feel it deserves its own shelf. I think Stephen King may one day be one that needs one of the larger shelves but for now I'm going to see if I can fit my full collection on there. So in my Stephen King collection so far there are more books somewhere in the boxes. We have Pet Cemetery, The Shining and Salem's Lot all have these matching um, spines so I'll put them together and then we have a copy of Carrie in a really cool like I don't even know how to describe this design, but there's a collection of his books that just have like a really bright colour design and I think they look super cool. So there's Carrie, and that brings me to my Stephen King shelf. Next up, what do we have in the box? Bear Town by Frederick Buckman is a contemporary. Then we have The Choice, which is another memoir about the Holocaust, um, so that one can go in my memoir section. We have Cherry, which I believe is a contemporary novel, I haven't read it yet. And then we have two more classics, The Snows of Kilimanjaro by Hemingway and A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. So, we're making our way through the box, we're doing pretty well, pretty well. Okay. Some romances. I think romance is going to get its own shelf, but I don't know where that shelf is going to be, to be quite honest. Okay, so we have two Taylor Jenkins read, After I Do and Forever Interrupted. Forever Interrupted is my favourite Taylor Jenkins read, and not that anyone asked, but my friend M from the uh, channel A Little Writer M, her favourite is After I Do, so she actually sent me this copy, and they are both incredible because it's Taylor Jenkins read, for crying out loud. Okay, romance can just sit on the top shelf for now. And then we have two books by different authors with very similar titles and covers, We Met in December by Rosie Curtis, and One Day in December, by Jersey Silver. Okie dokie. Alright, we have Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ang, which is from the same author as Little Fires Everywhere. So I'm gonna put this one in the same pile as that one, which is my darker reads section. Next we have The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstone, which I just love this cover, it's so cute. Haven't read this one yet either, but this one can go in my fantasy section. And so can The First 15 Lives of Harry August, which is, I think, a book about a guy who dies and then is reborn over and over and over again, but I haven't read that one yet either. Okay, next we have some interestingly sized classics and non-classics. The first one is A Spoonful of Poison by Agatha Raisin, which I'll probably put with my Agatha Christie's. And then we have a copy of The Catcher in the Rye, and Wide Sargasso Sea, so those are both little um, old penguin versions, so I'll find somewhere to group these together in a classic shelf. Next Stephen King to add to the shelves is Dr. Sleep. So I'm going to shift this around actually. The Shining can go here, then Dr. Sleep, although it doesn't have a matching spine, can go next to The Shining because it is the sequel to The Shining. Okay. Oh, and another Stephen King, we have his collection of novellas, different seasons, which includes The Body, which is my favourite one of his novellas, as well as Rita Hayworth and The Shawshank Redemption, which is also really, really good. I'm already thinking that potentially Stephen is going to need another shelf, because he just has so many books. I mean, he has so many books. Like a pile. Whew. Okay. Things My Mother Told Me, I believe it's a romance, haven't read it yet. The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky is, I'm going to put in contemporary, but that would be another one that would be a big contender for 
my favourite shelf downstairs. Then we have An Island Christmas by Jenny Colgan, which definitely fits into the romance category. Little Pieces of You and Me, which I believe is a romance as well. The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, which is definitely a classic. The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak, which I believe obviously is a historical fiction. Historical, <laughs> historical fiction. However, the main character or the narrator rather is death, I believe. So I feel like it kind of walks that line between historical fiction and fantasy. So I think I'm going to put it in this little section here. And then The Two Lives of Lydia Bird by Josie Silver is another fabulous romance. Mistletoe and Murder maybe can go in darker reads section. The Institute by Stephen King is obviously by Stephen King um, and I'm going to put that one and Misery both obviously on the Stephen King section but I'm going to put them next to Doctor Sleep because they all have kind of bluey spines which I think looks quite nice. Okay then we have The Course of Love by Alain de Botton and that one can go in the romance section. And then A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Hosseini, absolutely incredible book, could be considered for my favourite shelf, but for now I'm going to put this one in contemporary. Okay, we are almost at the end of box number one, so hooray. Okay, next up we have four hardbacks. First up is Eat Up by Ruby Tando, which is an incredible memoir, so that goes on the shelf of memoirs. Then we have Two Contemporaries, Writers and Lovers by Lily King and Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid, two books I read at the very end of last year and were both incredible. So that can go on my ever increasing in size contemporary shelf. And then we have Christmas at the Island Hotel by Jenny Colgan, which is a romance. Okay, so now that I've gone through one box, let's do some organising because otherwise I'm just going to end up with a horrific amount of piles of books and no organisation. So I'm thinking as of right now, darker books are going to go underneath Stephen King because I think that they're a good match. So what do we have on darker books? CJ Tudor's two books, which are really great. I know there's some more books to go on this shelf. We have two books by Celeste Ang, which can go next to one another. Then we have The Power, Mistletoe and Murder, and The Beach. Probably gonna come back and reorganize these by color after I've seen how many other books to go on these shelves. Then above Stephen King, for a lighter touch, I may go for Romances. Will I? Hmm. Will I? Yes, I will. I'm going to put romances here. So, Jenny Colgan can go there in her rightful place. And next to that one can go my other Jenny Colgan, Christmas at the Island Hotel and an Island Christmas. Then we can have the two Josie Silvers which are The Two Lives of Lydia Bird and One Day in December. Then we can have We Met in December. And then just these three books can perch there. I'm actually gonna... It's really annoying that Taylor Jenkins Reid's books are so large. Okay, they can just go here. Progress. Right. Big gulp. Okay. Now contemporary I know is going to need a big shelf. So I'm thinking I'm going to move classics down. Bring them down a notch. And contemporaries are going to start to take place on this shelf here. So we will start with the hardbacks, Kylie reads Such a Fun Age and Writers and Lovers. Next up, let's go with Perks of Being a Wallflower, Mine by Emily Merrill, Submarine, Expectation and the most fun we ever had, they belong next to Perks of Being a Wallflower because they're all blue. 
We have a couple of pinky ones. Another blue, so call me back by your name. Definitely need to invest in some bookends. Okay, then we have some yellowy oranges. Another red. Another red. And a couple more blues, okay. I'm deciding to leave classics until the very, very end because that is probably the largest collection. Not really sure you can call it a collection as such, but it's the largest number of books probably fall into that category. So we'll do that last. <laughs> which is obviously me just stalling because I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> Lol. Okay, next up, what do we have? We have memoirs, which I don't have a huge amount of memoirs, but I think they're gonna be like a top shelf situation. So we'll put them there for now. Switch that around. Okay, and then finally, we have fantasies crossing into historical fictions. So let's go with the very top shelf on the other side of that. I'm gonna put the more pure fantasies on the top and then if I need to, historical fictions can have their own shelves. <gasps> that was very dramatic. Excuse me books, I put you there for a reason. ignore me that's fine okay on to box numero two ah. there's nothing that a good cup of tea can't get you through although this is a very overwhelming task okay i'm opening the second box now obviously this little collection belongs in the fantasy section and this is where i'm running into problems because i've miscategorized these three, which was the three Greek myth retellings, are going to be taken off of there and I will recategorize them later on. But for now, that can sit there. And what else can I move? I'm thinking Lanny Taylor and my two Erin Morgensterns are also going to move. Don't know to what intent yet, but I feel they belong elsewhere. Okay, and I know there's another box that belongs with the Lord of the Rings. And by box, I mean book. Ta -da! The Silmarillion, which is by Tolkien as well, um, obviously can go with the two three, four other Tolkien books, and I also have one more on the way in the post, which I'm reading for a Tolkien read-along, so that's fun. Next up, we have a huge version of Pride and Prejudice, which is also a recipe book, which I just think is so cute. So I'm actually going to put this one to one side because I think that this one would better served elsewhere rather than on the shelves, but I think this one might end up on the favourites just because Although I wouldn't say Pride and Prejudice is my favourite Jane Austen, I do love the fact that this is a recipe book as well, and so it's my favourite copy of Pride and Prejudice. So that one can go over there. But on that very same topic, we have another Pride and Prejudice, which can go with all of the other Jane Austen books for now. Okay. Next up, we have another memoir educated by Tara Westover which is incredible and that can go up to Memoir City with all of the other memoirs and then we have some more contemporaries we went to the woods and normal people two incredible books and these can go in the hardback section of contemporary town oh that's too large too large and in charge Okay, next we have, hmm, where 
do these go? The Truants by Kate Weinberg is a dark contemporary and I'm wondering whether I may carve out an extra section for darker contemporaries. For now I'm just going to pop it on the contemporary shelf but I do think that I have a particular penchant for dark contemporaries that I think distinguish themselves from the more light-hearted ones. So included in that category would also be a Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara, which again can go in there. I don't know if I should really call that a contemporary because it takes place over such a significant amount of years that part of it I guess could be considered contemporary and other parts more reflective, but I guess it does to the intents and purposes of what we're doing today fit into the contemporary category. Alrighty then, next up, The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. It's another one that is kind of like part historical, part contemporary, because it starts in the 60s, but then it goes right through until, I mean, like, the last section takes place in 20-something. So it's like, goes from a time when you could say it's historical fiction to contemporary, and it's definitely a dark contemporary, so I'll just pop that one in there for now. Next up we have The Time Traveller's Wife, which I believe kind of falls into maybe the, hmm, it's definitely, it is obviously about time travel, but then largely feels contemporary from what I imagine about the book. Where have I put? This one I think will be very similar to the first 15 lives of Harry August. And so I'm going to put them to one side and decide what to do with them later because that is what we do. Okay, next up, Hot Milk by Deborah Levy I think is a contemporary. And then we also have The Last Tang Standing which I think is a romance. Romance is already looking like it needs more space than I have given it. So. Next up we have Crescent City by Sarah J Mass, which is definitely a fantasy, can go in fantasy city up here. And then we have The One That Got Away by Simon Wood, which is a thriller, a large, oh I hate it when books are just slightly larger than other books, I hate it. It's really a pet peeve of mine. And then we have The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein, which is another retelling. So that one can kind of go with these three Greek myth retellings for now. We'll see where they end up. Okay. Secret History by Donna Tartt is, of course, an incredible dark academia. So that's going to go... I think I probably need a dark academia shelf, so I'm going to start one, and that will include... Donna Tartt, The Secret History, and also The Truants by Kate Weinberg, and that can go here for now. Next up, we have Flowers in the Attic by Virginia Andrews, which is definitely going to fall into the darker reads section. Then what else do we have? Okay, we have The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa, which I feel like could be described as dark academia, kind of falling into the dystopian end of the spectrum but it is kind of about what happens when knowledge and power I guess it's probably not like a classic dark academia it's definitely dystopian but I might put it in my dark academia section for now and we'll see what happens who knows next up we have Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand which is a another darker dystopian contemporary kind of crossover so i'm gonna put that to one one side for now next up is the confessions of franny langton by sarah collins which is a historical fiction so i'm gonna put that one with my other historical fictions which includes the potato peel pie society and a sky painted gold okay oh a gigantic book muse of nightmares by lanny taylor now where on earth did i put strange the dreamer where are you 
Oh yeah, I remember I took that off of the shelf. Okay, that can just sit with Strange the Dreamer for now. And then I have two more Taylor Jenkins read books. We have Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six. So they are obviously gonna go in my romance section, but I think romance needs a rejig. So we will have Daisy Jones and the Six there in the hardback section and then the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo can go next to it and then we have following that the other two Taylor Jenkins read and that means that Romance has already taken up one shelf so I'm going to move Dark Academia down a shelf and then if Romance overspills we can just move straight across into this section. We've got this. Okay, The Gracier by Kim Lidget is a dystopian. So, I'm going to put that one here next to the memory police for now and we'll just, we'll just see what happens. Okay, George R.R. R. Martin, Fire and Blood. He's definitely going to need a full shelf or at least like a large portion of a shelf. So that's just going to go to one side for now until that time comes. Next up we have another romance, it ends with Us by Colleen Hoover, so we're moving into romance shelf numero two. And then what else do we have? Okay, Mexican Gothic, which I read for the Dark Academics book club, so that one can also go in this section for now until I decide how to place them. We have The Guest List by Lucy Foley, which will go in my thrillers slash dark read section and then we have the outsider by Stephen King which of course goes with the rest of Stephen King's masterpieces and Stephen King may need the second shelf as well oh lordy okay next up we have two teeny tiny classics this one is Animal Farm by George Orwell and The Breakthrough by Daphne du Maurier which are just going to go to the misc classic section for now along with two copies of The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald obviously classics all right hmm. next two contemporaries with the fire on high by Elizabeth Acevedo and Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine this one is definitely a favorite of mine so that would along with normal people and the purpose of being a wallflower end up on my favorite shelf downstairs if that materializes but for now it can just slot in next to perks on my contemporary shelf whilst with the fire on high can slot next to clap when you land because it's by the same author lovely next up we have two sets of books that are just huge collections we have if i can dislodge it from the base of the book my harry potter collection which i think may share a shelf with my game of thrones collection if they can all fit and then on that topic we have aforementioned Game of Thrones collection as well so they can just slide over here. Okay this might be my final Stephen King this is my copy of it and if that is the case then all my Stephen Kings fit nicely on one shelf for now but I know that they're definitely gonna I know I have more Stephen Kings I'm lying already I know that there's more there okay <laughs> Little Darlings by Melanie Golding is a thriller, so that can go in my darker reads section. And then we have two contemporaries, my favourite two contemporaries, the best two books ever written, ever, in my humble opinion. And those are both of Sally Rooney's books, Conversations with Friends and Normal People, which I do have two copies of. So they can just slide in actually next to my other copy of Normal People, because why not? those ones would probably be the ones that end up on my favourite shelf downstairs as well for anyone who's interested. Okay, the last section of books from box number two. What have we got? Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood, which is a dystopian and I'm starting to think that dystopian shelf needs to happen. Okay, we have The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton, which is a classic. We have The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley, which is a darker read. And then we have two more Stephen Kings, which this time I think might be my last two. We have a selection of short stories, which is The Bazaar of Bad Dreams, and then also Green Mile. So, 
that leaves me in a little bit of a pickle about what to do with my Stephen King collection because it's not large enough to fill two shelves but it's too big to stay on one shelf. So I'm just going to leave those books there for now and like everything else that I don't want to deal with, we'll come right back to it. And then my two Lucy Foley books can just slot right here, basically taking that dark read section to full. And that brings us to the end of box number two. So let's move on to box. Actually, that's a lie. Let's have a look. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, what can we do about this? So, George Orwell, Animal Farm, is a definite dystopian. Oryx and Craig by Margaret Atwood is a definite dystopian. I know that The Handmaid's Tale is in here and that is undoubtedly a dystopian. And then we can categorise The Gracia and The Memory Police both here as dystopians as well. So I'm thinking that we start to form a dystopian shelf. Who's with me? Whoop, whoop. Okay. Um, okay. That makes sense, but where do I want to put it? Let's go with down here. Okay. And then I'm pretty sure that I'm going to maybe put like speculative fictions and like fantasies that kind of coincide with reality in this section as well so I'm also going to add in the first 15 lives of Harry August and the time traveler's wife into this section along with the two Margaret Atwoods and my George Orwell as well I also have realized that I have shooting an elephant by George Orwell which I mentioned somewhere back here yeah. Okay. And that is a selection of short stories based on his experiences. So I'm going to put him up there in the memoir section as well. Okay. And that brings us to the end of box number two. I'm going to leave the rest of my organisation until I've got more books to clarify my decisions. So let's move on to box three. Okay. At the very top of this box, we have some recipe books. So just briefly, there is a sourdough recipe book, a vegan desserts recipe book, a vegan on the go recipe book, and a feed me vegan recipe book by Lucy Watson. So I'm going to put these to one side because recipe books are not going to be living on the bookshelves anymore. And then we're starting to get into what is a gigantic collection of classics. So I'm going to move some things around because I think classics are going to be in this general area. So, without further ado, let's scoot some books. Okay, so classics are going to start to live on this section. So the first section of classics that we have is a really big collection of deluxe classics, so let's get them out of the box. So starting with Emma by Jane Austen, James Joyce's A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, and Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Ooh. And then Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, Dracula by Bram Stoker, and We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. We then have Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, the Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, Sense of Sensibility by Jane Austen, and Sherlock Holmes, A Complete Collection. Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov, and Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Some ones that have previously lived with our deluxe classics but aren't officially deluxe classics are The Odyssey by Homer, and then two copies of Watership Down by Richard Adams. And then the final deluxe classics are Dubliners by James Joyce, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey, Lord of the Flies by William Golding, Storm of Steel by Ernst Junger, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, and Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Okay, so 
This is good news because it means that we do have space to extend this collection, which I know will be music to both mine and Jay's ears. I'm now going to just rearrange these slightly to put matching authors next to each other. So at the front we're going to have the both of my Jane Austens, which are Certain Sensibility and Emma. We then have two James Joyce's, Dubliners, and The Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, so they can sit next to one another. We also have two Shirley Jacksons, Heart of Darkness. No, that's a lie. Heart. Why do I want to say heart? The Haunting of Hill House, and we have always lived in the castle. And then finally, not matching authors, but matching surnames, we have Emily Bronte and Charlotte Bronte with Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights, so they can go next to each other as well. Okay, now I'm just going to try and decide like which ones look nice next to each other. We then have this little collection of classics which includes Frankenstein, The Picture of Dorian Gray and Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde which I'm just going to put at the beginning of the shelf for now although they may move at a later date. Oh my god. Ghosts. Okay, next we have some non-classics. So we have The Queen's Gambit by Walter Tevis which is so difficult because it feels historical but also like I think at the time it was written it was contemporary so I feel like that goes in the contemporary section. That could just go on my contemporary shelf for now. Then we have The Family Upstairs, a recent purchase of mine which was recommended to me by a lovely girl called Jess who I sold one of my books to from my last video about bookshelves and then she recommended this book to me. So that one would go in darker reads but we are still deciding where that's going to go because it's quite an expansive collection. We then have another darker book which is The People in the Trees by Hanya Yanagihara which is contemporary again but also dark. So I'm going to put that next to a little life for now seeing that it's matching authors and then When God Was a Rabbit is another contemporary that I still need to read. Next up we have Stephen King on writing so another Stephen King that I need to rejig and then we have Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill which is a darker read so I can go there for now. We then have two Beth O'Leary books, The Switch and The Flapshare, which is so exciting and I cannot wait for her next book to come out. Literally this month, The Road Trip is coming out and I'm so excited. So these are romances, so I'm going to put these here, but I'm thinking what I may do in just a moment is do a little bit of a romance shift and have some more difficult romances which would include things like Taylor Jenkins Reid um, and like Colleen Hoover that are like romances that touch on darker topics and then more fluffy romances which would include things like Beth O'Leary so that's where I'm thinking I'm gonna go with that okay 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 right what next we have The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle which is a self-help kind of spiritual book so I can go in the non-fiction section then we have Paperweight by Meg Haston, which is contemporary. The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, I think could fall into classic. And The Mountains Echoed by Khaled Hosseini can go next to A Thousand Splendid Sons. And then we also have two more contemporaries, Paperweight and The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. Both contemporaries and contemporary already needs another shelf. <laughs> Lol. Okay. Next up, The Poppy War, I think would count as fantasy, so that can go up there. Then we have The Colour Purple by Alice Walker, which is obviously a classic. The Pact by Jodie Pico. Where did Jodie Pico's other book go? 
that's contemporary. We then have Station Eleven, which I understand to be a dystopian. So that one will go in my dystopian shelf down here. And then we also have The Lovely Bones by Alice Sebold, which I think, where does that go? I have other books like this. It is a darker read because it's about murder, but it's also like really interesting. It's more about like personal experience than the murder itself. But for now, I'm just gonna put that there. And then we have another one by Donna Tartt, The Goldfinch, which will obviously go with the secret history. Wherever the heck I put that? Secret history, where are you? Where did I put that? Okay, that's there. I found it. Okay, that's not in the real, a proper section just yet. Okay, next. I have the Bridgerton series. <laughs> Lovely. Now, that will get its own shelf. Uh, I'm probably just going to put it down here for now, near the romances, on its own little section. Because that definitely deserves its own section. Definitely is not in the right order though. And that's the end of box number three. So now I think I'm at a point where I really need to organize and think about what on earth is going on. So let's get the box out of the way and think about some organization. Let's start with the romances because I think I can do something with this section. Okay, so lighthearted romance definitely includes Beth O'Leary, and it definitely includes Jenny Colgan. And then darker romances. I think Josie Silver probably contains more of a like dark theme in her books. We have like a couple that meets and then they're separated and then they actually find out that, that one of them's going out with the other one's best friend and then they know each other for years and all that kind of stuff and then the other one is about someone who loses their partner on their birthday and has to come to terms with that so i feel like they're definitely a bit darker then we have we met in december that can definitely stay in light-hearted then we have the course of love now that one's recommended for people who are fans of sally rooney so i'm gonna put that one in the more like difficult romance section and then i'm going to assume that these other three are just going to go in light-hearted i haven't read them yet so time will tell i suppose hmm. do, 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 do. what to do next hmm. what do we have here I'm genuinely at a loss i don't know where to go next Shall we look at dystopians? No. Dark Academia? Oh, I don't know what to do. Okay. Okay, let's do it. Do what you ask? I don't know. Organise books, perhaps? I just don't know what goes where and when and how. Ooh, 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 ooh. Right, okay, I've made a decision. George R. R. Martin can go here, leading on from fantasy, which means that Game of Thrones also goes here. So we have Game of Thrones, Feast for Crows, And then after that, I'm gonna put just the Harry Potters for now, just because they're similarly of a fantasy type genre. <laughs> okay, so that's that. Um, the Adventures of Tom Bombadil. I can just sneak in here for now. Have I 
lost my mind, you're asking? Possibly. Okay. Classics. This is where I'm lost and confused. I'm thinking, will it fit though? This is the question. Will it fit? Stephen King, where do I put you? Stephen King on writing could rightly live in the memoir category up top. But the other Stephen Kings, I think I'm going to have to just make a second horror section, which can then include these other three dark books that can't fit on my darker reads section. Yeah? Are we saying yes? <sighs> to do with all of these other books that I just can't fully categorise. So we're looking at here, The Muse of Nightmares, Strange the Dreamer, My Dark Academias, Mexican Gothic, Saw Kill Girls, The Starless Sea. I'm just like, where do I want to put those? Where do you come from? Where do you go? Where do you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. Okay, <laughs> let's make some decisions here. I need to make space on the contemporary shelf. Could I? So, okay. Mine by Emily Merrill could definitely go in the darker romance category. <laughs> Call Me By Your Name, that could probably go in darker romance. Or just romance, I guess. The Pact is definitely darker romance because it's all about a uh, murder-suicide pact. But then I want to keep the two Jodie Picos together, so ignore that. Writers and lovers, that can definitely class as darker romance, I think. So that can go over here. could maybe go in darker romance also making room then for these two books here okay <laughs> the truants whilst the dark academia also is about a romance and kind of like an obsessive romance and how it influences a whole year of a girl's life and how everything that she does kind of depends on her connections with these two people who then are also connected with each other. So I think that could be counted as dark romance also. So that's that. I keep saying okay as if I've made a decision when we all know that I have not. Classics I'm thinking are just going to run across, but are they going to run across? Is that the right decision? Okay, change my mind. Lord of the Rings is going to go on this set shelf here because this is the shelf of collections because we have Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, Kind of makes sense to put Lord of the Rings on that as well. The Adventure of Tom Bombadil, I don't think I'm going to put on my shelves. I think I'm going to do something else with this. Maybe put it in somewhere else in the house because it's so small and it's kind of irritating to fit on a shelf. So that is one decision. And that then makes room on the top shelf for a little bit more fantasy, which means I can then replace Strange the Dreamer as well as... 
Muse of Nightmares on the top shelf here in my fantasy section. Okay. And perhaps on that shelf as well, I can then put the Starless Sea and the Night Circus. I know I took all of those books off the top shelf, but I'm now making space and I think that that's where that they should go. So there's a decision. I made one. I'll wait for your round of applause. Thank you. Okay, next up we have Mexican Gothic. Mexican Gothic. Mexican Gothic, where do we put you? Where do you want to go? Do I continue my darker read section? I think that makes sense. So from darker reads, then I can pop in Mexican Gothic. I can also put my two Donna Tarts and possibly also The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. I think these would all fit in a darker reads section. Okay. We're making progress. We love to see it. Okay. I know it's probably a stretch, but I think that The Confessions of Franny Langton, The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, A Sky Painted Gold, Circe, The Song of Achilles, and The Silence of the Girls could all be, to some stretch of the imagination, classified as historical fiction. And therefore, I'm going to put them on a historical fiction section, kind of towards the bottom, just because I don't read much historical fiction, so they don't seem to really fit anywhere else, and so I'm just going to put them together. Okay. Now, I think classics moves down a section. But why? Classics can stay where it is. Okay. Classics can stay where it is. So we have classics here, and we're gonna have classics here also. Okay, Sawtail Girls, that can go in my darker read section because it is a darker read. Congratulations to me for deciding that. Okay, classics. Okay, let's start Jane Austen Town. Jane Austen Town can be here. We also have Pride and Prejudice, that can go there. And we have another two Jane Austens, they can go there. Do I have enough Jane Austens for them to all just go on the end of this shelf? go. That feels good. I support my own decision here. I wish someone else was just telling me where to put these books. I don't like having this much power. But I think it's time to open up the fourth and final box. Ooh. So, box number four is largely Jay's box, but that will mean that there's a lot of classics in it as well. So I'm just gonna empty them all out and then see where we can put everything basically. So without further ado, let's move to it. Okay, we have a collection to begin with of Patricia Highsmith books. A lot of Patricia Highsmith books. Okay, 
There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Patricia Highsmith books. These are Murder Mysteries, the talented Mr. Ripley series specifically. Um, and I think there are some other ones as well. These might just be, oh yeah. So there's six Ripley books or five Ripley books and then two other Patricia Highsmiths, which is Strangers on a Train and The Cry of the Owl. So these are gonna stay in the collection. Where that collection goes is for future me to decide. Okay, then we have a Dostoevsky and the Iliad. So Jay has quite a lot of Dostoevsky. Speaking of the devil, we have another Dostoevsky. And then we have Don Quixote. I always forget how that's meant to be said, but I think it's Quixote. Um, so that's there. What else? Oh, like his Patricia Highsmith, Jay also has a large collection of Cormac McCarthy books. So we have one, two, three, another Patricia Highsmith, four Cormacs, five Cormacs, six Cormacs, six Cormacs, and that can go next to the Patricia Highsmiths. Loving it. Okay, next up we have another Dostoevsky. We have The Leopard by Thomasy e. D. Lampedusa, which I have never read. And then what else do we have? Lots of books, that's what. Okay. Dead Souls by Gogol. Another Bulgakov, another Bulgakov. Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. This is part of the Penguin English Library collection, so that will stay together wherever the rest of those books are. And then we have Lolita, which can go there as well. I think this is non-fiction, so this can go up here with memoirs and other such books. And we have Riders of the Purple Sage by Zane Grey. Don't know anything about that book. We have of Lomov, which is one that Jay just read and really, really liked. And then we have more books. Okay. American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis. And then Jay's very limited number of contemporaries, or historical fictions rather, which are Fatherland, HHHH, and Munich. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put these with my historical fictions because we both have such a limited collection that they can definitely all fit on one shelf. Next up, we have one of our largest, most beautiful and most prized collections, and that's our Russian classics. So, let's reach in and get it out. Okay, I've been through this collection so many times, but essentially we have Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak, Life and Fate by Vasily Grossman, Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov, Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky, War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy, and Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. So, that's that. And that's gonna just go to one side for now whilst I uh, arrange everything. God, that's heavy. This is definitely a workout. Alrighty. Next up we have the rest of the Penguin English Library. So this is a collection that we have of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books, but it's very extensive. There are so many books in this collection. We have Robinson Crusoe, The Secret Agent, Lady Audley's Secret, North and South, Far From the Madding Crowd, A Christmas Carol, The Call of the Wild, and The Scarlet Letter. And I do just love how these books look. I actually really like how they look stacked sideways so I might kind of do that with them but we shall see what happens. Okay next up we have Diener Lernt Deutsch which is a German language learning book and that can go up on the non-fiction section as well. Another collection of classics that we have is these Virago and Modern Classics, including two Patricia Highsmiths and two Daphne du Maurier's. There's Rebecca, Jamaica Inn, Strangers on a Train, and the talented Mr. Ripley. So that can also just perch there for a moment. Okay. Penultimate pile here. We have Mark Twain, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. We have To Die in Spring 
which is I think about World War One. So that could go in historical fiction, as can Berlin by Anthony Beaver. Then we have a Dostoevsky, we have a Bulgakov, we have Gogol, we have Patricia Highsmith, which can go with the other Patricia Highsmith, there's two there. Okay, the final pile. Okay, let's do this. Right, we have another Watership Down book. This is Tales, Tales from Watership Down. We have The Idiot. We have Empire of the Summer Moon. That is a non-fiction that can go up here. We then have Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, which is definitely a dystopian, a dystopian shelf. Bulgakov and Dickens. And that brings us to the bottom. Oh, I did drop two books. Whoa. Cold Mountain. I know Jay loves that. And then Fight Club. Fight Club, I think, counts as a darker read. So I'm going to put that up there. Okay, now to organise. Can any more books fit in the darker reads section? Should I put Birth of Donna Tarts? They can definitely fit there. And I guess both of Hanya Yanagihara's books are darker reads. That's A Little Life and the People in the Trees. then what else do we think so many decisions you know okay dystopians moving up the shelf i think these dystopians all count as darker reads and therefore they can slot in here Historical fiction's going down here. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's do this. Mm hmm. All right. I think that maybe next up, I'm going to move down a little bit and see where life takes us. So let's shift things down a gear and get on with it. <laughs> That is getting very cold now. Ugh, disgusting, but also kind of want to keep drinking it. But welcome to the fourth bookshelf. We have left back, back, back shelf behind. We've left the other bookshelves back behind. And we're moving on to the fourth bookshelf, which I think kind of makes sense to be classics and mostly Jay's stuff because this is kind of going to be the filming space. So those are my books and Jay's books are going to kind of be over here. So let's start with some collections, I think, beginning with the wonderful Russian classics. So they can just slot in there and I think that they can be followed very closely by the Virago modern classics, which very neatly match my copy of The Great Gatsby, which is a gold covered one. And I think also this hardback and this softback of Watership Down, they just kind of like go, I think. So they can kind of slot in here. And I think next to them, we'll put this lovely selection of Penguin English Libraries. That looks pretty, I think. Do I have one more book I can slot in there just to bulk it out slightly? Perhaps, 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 perhaps we can put them, maybe this copy of Deep Water by Patricia Highsmith and then that can just kind of yeah I like 
like that. Okay, next up, we're gonna move to classics again. Woohoo! Okay. What classics do we have? Jay has a lot of Russian classics. So I'm gonna try and find ones that have matching spines and just go from there because that makes sense to me. Okay, that's not really a classic. That's not really a classic either. Okay, so we have some red spines. Red spines, these are the vintage collections. Another vintage. And then we have some Oxford and Penguin World Classics. Black spine. Um, this is a black spine. That's other. That is other. That is Virago. Hmm. Maybe that leaves. These go next to the other braggers. And I'll switch it around. So we have two Daphne du Maurier's here. There's the House on the Strand and My Cousin Rachel, which are by Daphne du Maurier. So I kind of want to put them with the other ones, especially because they're from the same publisher, Virago. So that kind of works like that. And then. That's another Virago modern classic from Patricia Highsmith, so that can go there. And that finishes that section off nicely. So back to finding matching spines. Okay. Mm, oh, blue spines. Mix it up slightly. And then we have another red spine. That's a blue spine, but it's tiny, so I can go there for now. <laughs> okay. Red spine. Blue spine. White spine. That's not matching anything else. Red. Psycho, you're gonna go, I'm gonna put Psycho elsewhere, I think. We have white. classics that have these like yellowy spines. Oxford. That's kind of miscellaneous. The Catcher in the Rye, that can go elsewhere. Essie Hinton, The Cold Purple, The Bell Jar. So I'm thinking like, I have some Gatsby's here. Two copies of The Great Gatsby as well as a copy of The Catcher in the Rye, The Outsider, The Bell Jar, and The Colour Purple. And these all, to me, are modern classics. So I'm thinking that maybe, oh, and also this one by Virginia Woolf, Mrs. Dalloway, is another modern classic. So those ones are gonna go over here in a modern classic shelf. Okay. Okay, what next? I'm thinking I might put these two, Heidi and Little Women, also in that little modern classic selection. I know that they're not modern classics, but those modern classics also comprise some of my favourite classics, like The Great Gatsby and The Colour Purple and The Outsiders. So I'm thinking that these can go in there as well and just slot in nicely in that little section. Okay. Hmm. 
Now I have two Agatha Christie's, another copy of The Catcher in the Rye, and also The Wide Sargasso Sea. So I'm going to put that on that shelf as well with some of my books just for now. See what happens later. Okay. Next up, what do we have here? The oh, Odyssey. And where did the Iliad go? Oh, that's over there. Okay, so the Odyssey can go here with this miscellaneous book. And then these two copies of Watership Down and Tales from Watership Down can go here as well in like a little miscellaneous section. And then I have another copy of Frankenstein and also the one from Agatha Raisin, A Spoonful of Poison. And I'm just going to put them one on that shelf that was my shelf. Okay. Moving on. One more shelf for Jay, and we're going to take it down slightly lower, and that one is going to be his collection of Patricia Highsmiths, and also his collection of Cormac McCarthy's, and then finally two miscellaneous ones, which is The Riders of the Purple Sage and Cold Mountain, which I haven't read, but I've seen the film and I kind of want to read it, so they can go there also. Have I left anything out? Oh yeah, American Psycho. Now I guess that could go on his miscellaneous shelf next to Cold Man. Oh my God, that was nearly a disaster. I think I'm done. Wow, that was fun. Stressful, but fun. And what makes me so happy is that we have two of the smaller shelves left empty and then one two three four five of the larger shelves left empty so we have like the equivalent of six full large shelves still with no books on them and there's still some space on some of these shelves and it just makes me so happy because i've been so used to just stacking books and the shelves being like full immediately so the fact that we actually have some space to grow our collection just makes me so happy. My bookshelves are full of books and I'm so so happy about it. As I'm sure you could sense from the intense levels of stress that I had from trying to decide where to put which books, it's been such a long time since I've had the opportunity to organise shelves. It felt so alien and yet so exciting and liberating because I can do whatever I want with these shelves. I'm very happy with the rough order that I've got these books in and just the fact that I now have a space where I can literally see every book that we own without having to lift out piles of books that are stacked in front of piles of books and in front of other piles of books. And I can literally just look at the shelves and find whatever I want. I'm sure I'm going to be like altering the organisation and maybe find some little decorative pieces to have on the shelves as well, some fairy lights and all of that fun stuff. And I think I will also film a bookshelf organisation tour that's maybe a little bit more aesthetic once I have finalised the organisation of these shelves. But for now, I hope you enjoyed seeing me unpack all of the shelves and figure out where on earth I wanted to put all of the books and all of that fun stuff because I certainly enjoyed doing it. Thank you so so much for watching and if you have any recommendations for like a good 
system for organising books, either by genre, by colour, by category, by some other magical system, then definitely let me know in a comment down below because I'm very much open to exploring all of the different organisation methods that there might be out there because I literally have no clue what I'm doing but I'm gonna have a fun time organising these shelves and just seeing where they go and where they grow with our literary collection that now actually has space to expand. So thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you next time.